good morning girls let us continue with our unit number 4 okay uh, in the last lecture we completed the examples of looping structure available in plsql now today uh, we are going to start cursor in plsql let us see the concept first oracle creates a memory area known as the context area for processing an sql statements whatever statements sql statements you are writing for executing that uh, sql statements oracle always creates a memory area which is known as context area uh, this area contains all the information needed for processing the statement for example the number of rows process etc right a cursor is a pointer to this context area whatever the can context area created by oracle the cursor is a pointer to that context area plsql controls the context area through a cursor a cursor holds the rows one or maybe more than one and uh, which are returned by the sql statement right the set of rows the cursor holds is referred to as the active set i repeat the set of rows held by the cursor is referred as the active set you can name a cursor so that it could be referred to in a program to fetch and process the rows written by the sql statement okay uh, one at a time there are two types of cursors available in oracle number 1 is implicit cursor and second one is explicit cursor let us uh, clear the concept of implicit and explicit cursor one by one begin with explicit cursor sorry implicit cursor implicit cursor are automatically created by the oracle whenever an sql statement is executed okay this is automatic process done by oracle whenever you execute sql statement uh, oracle automatically create an implicit implicit cursor when there is no explicit cursor for the statement programmers cannot control the implicit cursor and the information in it if you want to do some controlling over uh, the cursor in that situation you have to create your own cursor that is called explicit cursors right later on we will cover that topic also uh, whenever a dml statement insert update uh, or delete either of this uh, statement is issued an implicit cursor is associated with this statement for insert operation the cursor holds the data that needs to be inserted for update and delete operation the cursor identifies the rows that would be affected in plsql you can refer to the most recent implicit cursor as the sql cursor which always has some attributes these attributes are percent found is open not found and row count okay i repeat most recent implicit cursor as the sql cursor which always has some attributes like found is open not found and row count the sql cursor has additional attributes like bulk row count bulk exception etc these are designed for use with a for all statement here you can see the table where the description of each attributes are explained first one is percent found this attribute returns true if an insert update or delete statement affected one or more rows or a select into statement return one or more rows otherwise this will return false percent found means this attribute always return true 
if an insert update or delete statement affected one or more row of your table right and uh, in case of select into statement return one or more row uh, otherwise it returns false the second attribute is percent not found the logical opposite of percent found it returns true if an insert update or delete statement affected no rows not a single row is affected by this statements in that case this uh, attribute returns true in case of select into statement uh, again the statement if returns nothing not a single row in that case uh, the value of this attribute is true otherwise it returns false which is exactly opposite to percent found attribute right now next one is percent is open uh, this is always return false for implicit cursor because oracle closes the sql cursor automatically after executing its associated sql statements so whenever you try this uh, curse uh, attribute is open it always return false then uh, percent row count uh, this returns the number of rows affected by an insert update or delete statement or returned by a select into statement any sql cursor attribute will be accessed as sql percent attribute name as shown below in the example here you can see one example we will be using the emp table we had created and used in the previous sessions right mm. so let us try to understand the implicit cursor with the help of an example example number 35 here one program is given which will update the table and increase the salary of each employee by 500 and here we are going to use sql percent row count attribute to determine the number of rows affected by this query right as we have seen that the row count returns the number of rows affected by insert update or delete statement or return by a select into statement so how we can use in our program let us see again we will begin with the declare keyword here uh, one variable with name total rows is declared and the data type of this variable is number the length is 2 now begin section initialize with the keyword begin here what is our condition we want to increase the salary of each employee by 500 so we will take update query um update emp set salary equals to salary plus 500 okay set salary salary equals to 500 then if sql percent not found then no employee is selected not found if not a single row is affected by update query in that case this will return true okay and uh, uh, here um, the no employee selected this message will be printed if this condition will return true if not a single uh, row will be affected by this update query in that case only this percent not found cursor, uh, cursor attribute will return uh, true and we will get the message no employee is selected else if sql found if uh, a single row or more than one row uh, will get affected by this update query in that case sql percent found will return true in that case we want to find the number of rows the number of rows affected by uh, this query so here uh, if this uh, condition will return true will enter in this block here sql percent row count as you know that this attribute is useful for counting the number of rows or determining the number of rows affected by update query right that we will get in total rows and uh, 
um, we printed one message total uh, rows uh, means the number of employees selected end of if end of sql block and execution of this block okay so here in our current program we have used three um, implicit uh, sorry one uh, cursor and three attributes of that th uh, implicit cursor they are not found found and row count as you can see the prefix attached with uh, all this attribute is sql okay sql percent not found sql percent found and sql percent row count whenever you want to use this attribute you have to uh, attach a prefix sql percent with the name of this attributes so let us execute this code open your sql window scott and tiger set server output on and as you can see um, update st statement affected 14 rows right so we got 14 employees selected uh, let us execute the statement one by one from line number four update employee set salary equals to salary plus 500 whatever the existing salary we want to increase the existing salary with 500 without any condition okay so this will affect 14 rows so in that case sql person not found this condition will return false so this line will not print any message on the screen and directly we will come on the line number 8 else if sql person found right this will return true and we will uh, going to determine the number of rows affected by update using row count attribute and the value of row count attribute is assigned to the variable total rows in the same else if block uh, we have printed one message total rows employees selected means the number of rows affected by the update query is 14 14 employees selected and we got the message as an output now next one more example is here you can see on the screen here what is done let us see declare section total rows number begin update employee set salary equals to salary plus 500 where job equals to clerk now this time we want to increase the salary with 500 rupees for the job title clerk only not for the all right as we have done in the previous example there were no condition in update statement okay here we have a condition where the job title match with uh, the title clerk only okay uh, if condition sql percent not found if the update query do not affect any row in that case we will get true and the message will be printed on the screen if the update query affect a single row or more than one row in that case else if sql percent found this will return true and we will get a number of row count the number of rows affected by uh, this query okay and that we want to print on the screen for that we have taken dbms output dot put line so let us execute this code only the minor change between these two programs 35 and 36 here 
uh, we have taken one condition and in the previous example there were no condition okay so here only uh, four employees are working as a clerk so only four employees selected for updation of salary we got a message for employees selected and our pls fill process procedure successfully completed uh, if you check the records in employee table you will find that the rows have been updated okay this is all about our implicit cursor mm. let us see what is cursor one more time oracle creates a memory area uh, this is an important question for all of you for your final exams right oracle creates a memory area known as the context area uh, for processing any sql statements which contain all the information needed for processing the statement for example the number of rows processed a cursor is a pointer to this context area okay um uh, plsql controls the context area through a cursor and the cursor holds the rows returned by the sql statement a set of rows the cursor holds in refer as an active set you can name this area you can name a cursor so that it could be referred to in your program to fetch and process the rows written by the sql statements there are two different types of cursors available implicit cursor and uh, explicit cursor implicit cursor uh, are automatically created by the oracle whenever you execute any sql statement but the drawback is you cannot control the implicit cursor and the information in it whenever dml statement like insert update or delete delete any of this statement is issued an implicit cursor is associated with this statement okay for insert operation the cursor holds the data that need to be inserted and for update and delete operation the cursor identifies the rows that would be affected in plsql you can refer to the most recent implicit cursor as the sql cursor right the default name is sql as i told you that everywhere you can find um the name sql percent here you can see sql percent is used sql percent so this is a default name as i told you that default name is sql okay sql cursor which always has attributes such as percent found percent is open percent not found and percent row count if you want to use this attribute in your program then uh, you have to uh, use this name with sql cursor only in case of implicit cursor uh, person found this attribute always return true uh, not always but it return true if an insert update or delete statement affected one or more rows or a select into statement returns one or more rows otherwise this returns false then percent not found the logical opposite of percent found the second attribute not found this is logical opposite of percent found if uh, in case insert update and delete statement does not affect any row uh, in that case mm, this attribute will return true and if uh, insert update or delete affect a single row or more than one row uh, then this attribute returns false is open always return false for implicit cursor because oracle closes the sql cursor automatically after executing its associated sql statement so whenever you try to uh, get the value of is open in, in that case you will get false
row count attribute this will um, count the number of rows affected by the insert update or delete or we can say return the number of rows affected by the insert update or delete statement okay so these are the attributes important attributes of at, uh, implicit cursor and that you can use for your programming purpose okay next is explicit cursor explicit cursors are programmer defined cursor for gaining more control over the context area as you know that con context area is created by oracle automatically and uh, that memory area is used for handling the sql statement if you want to get a more control over this context area you can define you, your own explicit cursor okay an explicit cursor should be defined in the declaration section of your plsql block it is created on a select statement which returns more than one row see um here observe this thing select statement which returns more than one row if you want to handle more than one row which will be returned by select statement that you can handle with the help of explicit cursor the syntax for creating an explicit cursor is cursor cursor name is and then select statement i repeat the syntax of creating an explicit cursor in your program cursor is a keyword the name of cursor is select statement working with an explicit cursor includes the step shown over here first one is declaration of the cursor for any slicing the memory area in oracle then second is to open the cursor for allocation of the memory third step is fetching the cursor for retrieving the data whatever data you retrieve with the help of sql statement that um, you can fetch with the help of cursor and in the fourth step is to close the cursor to release the allocated memory whatever memory area is allocated for the particular cursor that we can release with the help of closing the cursor first one is declaring the cursor how we can do this let us see with the help of example declaring the cursor defines the cursor with a name and the associated select statement for example cursor as i told you that this is a keyword this is a keyword and followed by the name of cursor it is as per your wish you can define a name of cursor but it should be relevant to cursor you want to deal with okay cursor c curs customers is a name of cursor then is is a keyword and the associated select statement is select id name and address from customers okay so this is a declaration of cursor uh, cursor c1 is another example cursor c1 name of cursor is c1 cursor is a keyword is is a keyword and the associated select statement is select employee number e name from employee okay second step is opening the cursor opening the cursor allocates the memory for the cursor and makes it ready makes it ready for fetching the rows written by the sql statement into it i repeat opening the cursor allocates the memory for the cursor means create the memory for the cursor and makes it ready for fetching the rows written by the associated sql statement into it here you can see the example will open the about defined cursor the defined cursors are c customers and c1 so 
just we have to write open C customers and similarly open C1 and this way you can open the cursor it is very easy third one is fetching the cursor now for fetching the cursor this involve the accessing one row at a time okay you cannot access all the rows uh, which will be returned by the uh, select statement you can access only one row at a time for example we will fetch rows from the above open cursor as follows fetch c customers into c id c name and c address these three variables we need for accessing the values which will be returned with the help of select statement id name and address right now at the end fourth step closing the cursor how you can close it closing the cursor means releasing the allocated memory for example uh, here we are going to close the above open cursor uh, as follows close and the name of customer again this is very easy to close the cursor as same as open the cursor okay let us try to understand the explicit cursor with the help of an example here you can see the complete example to illustrate the concept of explicit cursor first declare section cursor c1 is select as you can see the name of cursor is c1 is select e name salary job from employee this is an associated query for this cursor we need three variables for transferring the value of this three variables okay so here i have defined v e name v salary and v job the data type of all these three variables must be match with the data type of uh, the variables which are declared in employee table right as you know that we want to store the value of name salary and job in this variable so it must be matching data type it must have matching data type begin section then open c1 we are going to open the c1 using open keyword open c1 now fetching fetch c1 fetch c1 into v e name v salary and v job dvms output dot put line v name v salary and v job we want to print this values okay whatever value came in the cursor c1 in first iteration that will come in vnm v salary and v job that we want to print with the help of dbms statement now fetch c1 into vnm v salary v job again we want to print the same value third time fetch the c1 fourth time fetch c1 fifth time fetch c1 and then close c1 let us execute this program okay so we got five first five rows from emp table smith allen ward and jones and martin if we want to fetch all the 14 records from the employee table we have to repeat fetch uh, fetch step 14 times right as we know that our employee table contain 14 rows so for fetching all the records we have to repeat this fetch step 14 times but think about the table where we don't know how many records are there or if we are giving any condition in that case we also don't know how many numbers the select state statement will return so how to handle it how to handle that situation right before we handle that situation let we insert 
uh, fetch statement two more times. Let me execute the code one more time. This time you will get seven records. As you know that we have repeated fetch C1 step seven times two, three, four, five, six and seven. So we got seven records one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Okay. If you want to fetch all the records, you have to repeat uh, the same code, same fetch step 14 times. Here you can see 14 records on the screen. So it is very tedious for us to um, write the same step again and again, again, right? So how to reduce this code? How to reduce this code? We will take the help of looping structure, right? As we have already learned the looping structure in our previous session. Uh, we can use that loop structure in uh, handling the situation to handle this situation right in the next session i will show you how you can handle it and how you can reduce this code as you can see here the lines used for our code is um, 58 lines that we will reduce by uh, half of the line maybe less than that Okay, that we will learn in the next session how to use the looping structure with our cursor. Um, this is all about implicit cursor and explicit cursor. Okay, now in the next session, we will see the example number 38. There in that example, we are going to use looping structure. Um, that's it. Thank you.